right, this is gonna be a fun video. I just got this new package in the mail. Let's go ahead and open this up. Now, when it comes to comics and magazines, I prefer to have physical copies over reading them digitally. I've been backing a lot of Kickstarter campaigns lately, and I've been able to get more comics by doing the digital tier. So I have a huge folder on my Google Drive that's just full of digital PDF versions of the comics. So sometimes I go digital. This is something that I wanted to get my hands on. What we're looking at here is Heavy Metal Magazine. So I ordered these directly from the Heavy Metal website and they always have a rotating set of the, um, the back issues. So these are going way back. So here we go. Heavy Metal, the adult illustrated fantasy magazine. I really love this because the ones that I have that I've had for over 20, almost 30 years, they're so beat up. I have not laid my eyes on a brand new heavy metal magazine in decades. So this has never been opened, never been read. So here we have um, 2005, summer 2005, mystery special, uh, featuring Breakpoint and the Revenge of Count Starbucks. So this magazine was really great in its time. Um, to give you a disclaimer that there's gonna be some adult content here. All of my heroes who I ever learned about, I learned about them through Heavy Metal Magazine. So all of these artists who are featured in this these uh, calendars, these are my absolute heroes. And you'll notice publisher and editor-in-chief, Kevin Eastman from Eastman and Laird, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, so as we go in here, there's all of these different books that you can buy, lots of adult material there. Um, and then we get right into these comics. So it was kind of serialized so that you would get a part of the story in each issue. Sometimes they were standalone. So this is all really inspiring art for, for young, young Mungo. This was the stuff that really got me interested in the art form of comics. So I'm gonna take the time to read these and you see, there you go, this is just a, a one-shot short little story. Um, and then we go right into another comic right here. Milton by M.K. Perker. Really unique art style here. The kind of thing that you would never find in the big two. You know, Marvel and DC weren't really putting out stuff like this. So you'd have to go to a real indie shop to get something like this. Um, you could find this at gas stations, uh, anywhere where they sold magazines. Um, sometimes it was wrapped in plastic because it had so much adult content. Oh, and here you can see Frazato by the numbers. So Frazato, um, Frazato, he was featured quite a bit in heavy metal. And here we have this bloody scene starting out Breakpoint. I've never, I haven't seen these stories, so I'm gonna take some time. Starting with a figure bleeding out on the floor, dead bodies all around. So we're picking up like in the, in the story, a lot of times these one shot comics that they have in here, they would throw you right in at the end of the story. It's kind of like the Twilight Zone or um, one of those type of serialized um, science fiction where you're just thrown into a world and you're, you're gonna just be thrown right into the middle of everything. But then a lot of times the stories continued over many issues. And so you could kind of follow along. And we're getting this really beautiful art, watercolor. Every single one of these panels has really great detail. 
color. So we're, we're following this guy's been picked up and taken back in the ambulance. So we're getting to, we're getting a big chunk of this one. I'm gonna come back and read all of this. So not really your typical superhero comics. And it's uh, the adult fantasy magazine. Really great artwork here, wow. Okay, and here's a little insert for how you could become a subscriber. Heavy Metal is the premier adult fantasy illustrated magazine. Let's see, let's see what would it cost? A one year subscription for $18.95. That would have been a really great deal. So, I was never subscribed to Heavy Metal. I would just kind of get my hands on them every now and then. You know, as a kid, I lived in a small town where they didn't have a comic shop. So for me, it was like, anytime I could get my hands on a comic, I just read it until the pages fell off. So we're getting this full issue, we're getting murder, sex scenes, everything you want in an adult comic. So I'm just flipping through fast because I don't want to spoil too much of this for myself. Okay, so you're getting a full comic there. We're getting some adult anime, um, all kinds of books that you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. Um, and a lot of comic shops had an adult section, right? Where you, you, were, you were a young kid, you'd steer clear, or maybe when no one was really paying attention, you could go over and you could check out the, the wall of adult comics. But also, you're talking about, you know, adult anime and manga that you probably wouldn't get anywhere else in the States. You can get through heavy metal. So these are all for sale. These are DVDs, kind of like hentai stuff. And this is all super sexy. You even got some of this uh, tendril hentai stuff. And here's your huge catalog. So you could actually order all of these directly through your heavy metal. So, let's see, 2005, I don't think you'd be able to access this. And here's another full length story, Revenge of King Count Charbon. So this is just, once again, this is all hand painted, really beautiful illustration. And you're getting this full story in here. So that's, it just throws you right into the story. So it's like comic, a few ads for adult materials that you could order. And then just, this goes all the way to the end of the issue. So this whole thing, there's no articles. At this time it was just solid comics, solid comic goodness right there. This one's the mystery special from summer 2005. I kind of picked these out just by the beauty of the covers. And I also got the ones that were that were on sale. So this one's 1995. So we're going back another decade, a decade earlier. You're going to see the same kind of layout here. We're just we're straight into a comic right off the bat. More um more stuff you can order, and let's see, um, a lot of this uh, Milo Manara. So this was the era when I was really into heavy metal, so I've got some copies, and I've seen those same ads before for the, the Milo Manara stuff. And you're just gonna get this, you know, different unique styles, and I really love how these, a lot of these stories are kind of standalone. So it's just, it's like a little vignette. You're just like thrown into a world and you learn about these characters and then it comes to a conclusion. So Fiend, just a little short thing. So again, flipping through just to give you a taste. Let's see if I can pull out any, any more names. Uh, so the Saga of the Meta Barons.
This character of the Invincible Meta Baron was first introduced in 1892 in Mobius and Jodorowsky's cult classic graphic novel, The Inkle. So The Inkle, Inkow, I should say. Astute readers will recognize that the first 14 pages of this graphic novel are based on a sequence originally featured in Inkal 2. So here we are, we're getting something, uh, a kind of derivative work. We've got Jimenez on this amazing looking space opera. So this scene they're saying is coming directly from uh, a scene from Inkal too. So Jodorowsky and Mobius inspired this beautiful work. Really great, amazing detail on these panels and just taking you into a really rich world. So as a reader of heavy metal, you were just you know, one minute you're you're in this deep world. Next, you're you're given a short cartoon. This is just a one-page comic strip. Some funny adult humor. Some kind of uh, really provocative erotic stuff mixed in with all of these different um, mail order adult magazines and comics. So it's gonna, it's not, it doesn't shy away from the adult themes. So this is what's another thing that's really great about this. So you, you can see, who do we have here? I'm gonna flip past the, the page here. Okay, so this is 1995. Yeah, this was really the era when I was picking up these heavy metals at the shop. Here we have another, just a totally different art style. Love it. It's totally, it's all hand colored. This time you're getting these beautiful water colored panels. And it's funny is it doesn't have the cover. So you're just thrown right into the story. And then let's see, does it, it doesn't even give us the artist's name. This is really inspiring to me. This looks a lot like some of the stuff that I'm working on right now. Really heavy brush work and a kind of exaggerated cartoony. Uh, style so I can't wait to I'm kind of ruining these by jumping ahead so if you're not into spoilers you probably shouldn't watch and then here we go boom we're right back into our Jodorowsky story amazing okay so I've got more to show oh look at that see I was a big tank girl fan my exposures to tank girl came from um, you know, I used to pick up 2000 AD and I had, I think some Tank Girl stories that were slipped in there. And then seeing Tank Girl in this format, see, you could go ahead and you can get a Tank Girl shirt. This little advertisement at the back here. And then having a little 1996 calendar. What boy wouldn't want that on their wall? Come on. Boys and girls alike would love to see this. Julie Bell, Simon Beasley, Rowana, Olivia, and Royo. So some of the great fantasy illustrators of the time featured in that. I would have loved to have that calendar. Here we go, this one, I love this. I really just picked these out based on the covers. What covers did I want in my collection? This is the Samurai Special. So you do have this voodoo priestess unrelated and so let's see let's just go ahead and instead of skipping through here we'll we'll show right here on the contents right so you have disorder story and art stephanie cardocello colorist rita gargoni lettering azuric studio whole team there then quite on the spirit of the lake by joan Zombie by Oscar Capristo. The Immortal, The Eye of the Dragon by Eric Puke. So, this is really great to see. These are people who are, they're doing the writing, they're doing all of the artwork, they're doing the, the line art and the coloring of their own work. So, 
looking at this Spirit of the Lake. Uh, this is a one-person comic here. So you're really getting the full vision. So you're having creators who worked individually to tell these really beautiful stories. And I love to see this when you you get a huge chunk. Sometimes you're just getting like a piece of a story and then sometimes you get this full comic right in the pages. So I could go on and on talking about how great I think this is. Just good to point out the diversity and how amazing these are. Um, and of course, tons of uh, erotica. I think that's a great name for the kind of adult comics. Um, you know, what's the? there's a fine line between pornography and erotica. I think erotica is just, uh, it's the more tasteful side that embraces sensuality, um, content of a sexual nature, um, but leaning more towards um, arousal and, and, and not just, you know, full frontal gratuity. So I think that's the difference, you know, it's just gratuitous, gratuitous sexual content, or is it actually meant to, you know, arouse those deeper sensual fantasies? Wow, I guess that's my take on erotica. Again, Frizzato. You could all, you know, this was a different age. So before the internet, everything was done through the mail. So having these places where you would send off, um, I guess you would actually, you could even cut off this little mail order strip, send it in, and you would get, receive your books through the mail. Heavy metal, the specials. So I have a few of these now. So this is the poster special. This is one that I've had for years and it's kind of, I guess I can add these to my, my different heavy metal specials. I feel like the specials give you more full length comics in them. So, so this is sci-fi special from 2004. So 2003, 2004, 2005. Spring, spring, summer. So it was kind of like a quarterly thing. And then this is the one from 1995. So it's kind of nice that I have this stretch from the 2000s and I went ahead and this was really the era that got me involved in this. So again, I can't say enough about heavy metal. Maybe it'd be fun to do an issue, uh, another, another review of these where I actually um, spoil the stories for you and give you a good look. You know, it's over over 15 years have gone by since this has come out. But I really, really recommend uh, checking out Heavy Metal. If you've got any anyone who's out there who's reading the new Heavy Metal magazine, I'd love to hear your take on what they're doing these days. Again, it's an adult illustrated fantasy magazine. So you're gonna find the sex and violence. This is uh, this is HBO. This is not children's comics. Okay, and really beautiful stuff here. And I I even love the ads in these science fiction book club. Look at these. These are all sci-fi books. Look, five books for one dollar with membership. This was like a bit of a scam. You back in the in the eighties and nineties you would you'd mail order and it would be like, oh my God, I can get five books for a dollar. They wanna give you that introductory cheap price. Whoa, Star Wars novels for 20 cents. Because after that, you're gonna be paying for a membership price. So that's what these, these little, I'm not gonna leave that in there, of course. And this is just solid. This is all one story. First 60 pages here are all one story. So that is gonna be a real fun thing to read. Just love to show you the different art styles, just how great this artwork was. And you can see why um, as a young comic book reader, seeing this stuff 
just knock your socks off. This is really, really impressive work, front to back. Such a, shows the variety. And oftentimes like these one and done stories where they just throw you into a world, take you on a little bit of a journey and it comes to a, a brief end. So that's like a nice little six page comic by Brandon Graham. Super fun. And then a lot of people, you know, maybe after being featured in Heavy Metal Magazine would go on to do great things and affect the culture in major, major ways. Um, the movie Fifth Element was hugely inspired by the Inkle, Inkal, by Mobius. So we've, we've seen stuff that started out in the pages of heavy metal go on to the big screen. And it's great to take a little trip down memory lane with Heavy Metal Magazine. That's my loot for the day. This just came in the mail. I'm glad I could share it with everyone. If you'd like to see more uh, of my magazine collection, let me know.